took this inverter apart because I needed to make sure that this inverter, the way it's designed, and it is an in power, and it is made by, let's see if you can see that down there, Century. I don't know if you can see the readings on it, Century, uh, which, is, which is a, the inside of this inverter is designed with specific fan cooling towers. So the cooling towers here, and the fans go in on the ends. There's two fans there. Let's move this out of the way. And then there's two fans right here. So you have all these different fans. And here is your, here is your 110 MOSFETs up here in the top. And it it's, uh, brings it up to uh, give you the voltage you're going to use. And then, of course, down here is your different cycled circuits. Um, there's three, three. On the other side is three. There's three. So you got, you got six for each one of these blocks to jack your voltage. And then you've got these really big transformers. There's four of those. And there's literally about 40 of these diodes that are in here. So hopefully... Um, NeuroGuard 24, maybe he'll see the inside of this and recognize it. It has a very good control circuit. And this is that big end power and huge bus. This down here is a, is a copper bus and it's tinned. So it's, it's tinned copper bus. The board is fully treated. Get that light back on here. The board is fully treated so it doesn't corrode. You have these huge resistors up here on the top. And hopefully I can get a good focus on that for this voltage board right here. And then it goes into a control board over here that runs a digital meter. Let me see, get over there to it. Digital meter, remote, USB, and all that kind of stuff they put on a lot of them. And then two GFCIs that are 20, yes, 20 amp. So those two there are made for 20 amp. They blow at 20 amps instead of 15 like a lot of them in your house does. And you can tell by the wiring right there that that is big 10 gauge wires. This ain't no 12 gauge stuff. So, and then of course it has where you can wire it up remotely and there's the panel opening for it and there's the little lid. So all of my inverters over the years, even including this one, this little bitty inverter in here, this was made for a laptop while I'm out in my semi truck. And that is a 300 watt inverter that sets inside of one of these little crates and I'd set my laptop on top of it have a, a plug in for a light or other things and then the little inverter in there but it, this thing here ran for years and then that little fan there blew underneath my laptop to keep it cool while I was out on the semi truck that little inverter ran everything in the in that uh, computer that it needed ran now I have had a lot of inverters and there's your Syntec, Road Pro, Power Drive, uh, Voltec inverters. Here's the same thing. These are, these are identical to each other, but if you notice here, one says 400 watt, one says 300. Uh, Power Drive is probably more accurate. Um, it's about a 300 watt. Um, I did peak them out about 330. Um, then, of course, I've got my big Durafides. These are big. So let me turn this light off here. So I've got my big Durafides, and this is 2,000 watts, which uh, basically technically means it's about a 2,500 watt surge and about a 1,500 watt running. That's how you know what a Durafide can do. And then the peaks. Now, a lot of guys don't realize that this little rubber coating, this little rubber thing right here, it comes off, and then what you end up with is an identical inverter sold at Harbor Freight stores, and this is the same as the Syntec at a Harbor Freight store. However, they're $130 all the time with the cables and with the plug and remote set all the time at Amazon.com. So you can see it's the same. The same damn thing that comes that sells at, at uh, Harbor Freight for, you know, they price them at $200 and give you a coupon to get them at $100.5. And, and the same way with these. This is the 1200 watt peak right here, and this is the 800 watt peak. They're just a, they're just, I mean, it's what an inch and a half shorter here. Okay, so not much a big difference, just a couple of MOSFETs and a little bigger transformer is about all it is. These, these all come with their cables. Every one of them comes with their cables, including um, this one right here, I believe. No, I think that one actually goes with that Syntec right there. 
But there, the cables on this one here actually go on that 800. But you'll notice even these come with their cables. This one here is a Road Pro. This is actually a Road Pro 800 watt, and it is the same as an Ames. Okay? But the unique part about it is an Ames doesn't have all the venting that's in this one, for one. Two, the MOSFETs that are in this one, if you'll look, there's your, there's your, your drive, and then over here is your voltage. And, but the difference is, is that these MOSFETs are the next size up. And so that literally means that, you know, when, they, when Road Pro contracted these to be made, they contracted a little bit bigger MOSFETs. Every single component in this thing, except for the MOSFETs and the two big capacitors, these are bigger in this one that says 800 watt compared to an Ames that says 1,000 watts. So you, you, know, you do the math there. I've pushed this one here way in excess of 800 watts and it, and it doesn't fault. So I can tell you that right now. I have ran, which is really dumb to do, but with this one here, I have ran a 700 watt microwave and with a surge of about 1150 for, for a second. And it, and it ran it, did not fault. A fan ran like crazy once it got warmed up. And, and then that's another thing. This fan here is fully automatic, load sensing and heat sensing. Same way with this one, this one, this one, all of these. Here's the big Durafrides. And I call them Durafrides because uh, the first thing you gotta do is your power side transistors, you gotta change them because they are J, U, and K, and you can't do anything about it, okay? And then the circuit that feeds your capacitors, the first thing happens is your 2700 ohm resistors, they go. So once you replace those with half watt resistors instead of quarter watt, and you replace your capacitors with 60 volt, I believe it is, yeah, 60 volt instead of 36 volt, you're up there, and these actually will run for a long time. Getting back to this, this in power says that it's 5,000 watt. However, the fusing in this in power over here, if I get over here to it, is only good for about 4,800 watts. So it's only 500 amps of fusing that's in this right here. So that's not exactly, I wouldn't call that the greatest. Um, this right here, this big huge bus bar is about a sixteenth of an inch thick and looks like about an inch and almost an inch and a half wide. Tinned bus bar, tinned copper, and it's got really big lugs on it for hooking it up, nice hookup on it, big ground, and the there's the ground wire here that goes up, up to the top inside this cover, as you can see right there, and its square wave is, is good. Doesn't sag, doesn't have any offsets or anything like that. But the reason that I have this open is like I said, I need to uh, create a situation to where I can mount this to where the battery lugs are on this end. Because my hard wiring is on this end down here and the actual setup of the inverter is like this. Now, that would be upside down according to the sticker. Now, it might sound silly, but some inverters, same way with these Syntex, so most of the heat is over here. So if you mount it like this, upside down, if you mount it, you're gonna have the heat that's gonna be drafting up or coming up into the electronics that way. That's why they design them and they stick that sticker on them. And the, I know that sounds kind of goofy, like, well, they really thought that out, but you know, they did actually. So you have the heat up here instead of here, which creates more heat for the, for the transformers and everything else as it gets drawn up and out and putting it here it actually has a little better venting if you was to open this up you'll see that this is not very good venting down on this end but it's more increased from the center up and there's a reason for that so yeah it seems like it's pretty silly but something this big that runs as much stuff as i run i need to make sure so as you can see here with this with this right here it doesn't really matter in this inverter, it doesn't. It, it does not matter which direction, uh, how you mount it, north, south, east, west, upside down, doesn't matter. 
that was the point of taking it apart. Um, most people do not realize that these inverters all have multiple stages in them and this one here is not ex no exception it has a lot of get that dimmer it has a lot of capacitance inside of it and all the capacitors are for a much higher voltage they're all this one right here is 200 volt as you can see it right there I don't know if you can see that 200 volt same way with this one this same way with this one over here is 200 volt and all the same with those all the same with these running on this side and it's a lot I think there's roughly 16 of these um, capacitors running both sides here and here so eight for each one of these banks each one of these banks with six of the MOSFETs for power MOSFETs this gives you an idea of its physical size and it, it does weigh 32 pounds 5 ounces as is without no cables hooked to it it's 32 pounds 5 ounces that's how heavy this big thing is and if you see these big huge transformers I mean they are just huge sitting in here and there's four of them they really do put out a lot of power and this thing here draws a lot of power but what is so crazy is its idle power is practically nothing it literally idles at four watts so four watts at 12.8 volts is 0.3 amps roughly I mean it's just such a low idle idle uh, energy that's used to run this this in comparison literally runs at almost a half of an amp and it's just um, what is it seven a 750 750 watt this one doesn't run very high these durafides these suckers can run as high as an amp uh, and idle. Now that's crazy. The peaks run at about a, a half, a little under a half an amp. And these here, it doesn't matter if you get how big. This size, this size, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. It's their circuit in them that's designed for keeping them on. So the other thing is these little Voltex, I picked them up at WM or VM Innovations. And these little Voltex are true sine wave. As you can see here, pure sine wave. And they are impressive. I mean, they really are. They put out very good power and they are very clean and they will run a uh, refrigerator with ease. Not nothing, not no big double door with ice maker, but they will run your average, say 18 cubic foot refrigerator. This will. And it does have a surge that, um, it doesn't claim a surge. Now you'll see, here's the box. It doesn't claim a surge, okay? And however, the output um, of the, or the draw, the draw of the refrigerator that I hook these up to, it's basically pulling about 850 for a good second. And then it calms down to about 400. And then after two or three seconds, it'll run at about 120. And, and these run it without a question. They'll run an average refrigerator. And if you just keep your batteries tight, they'll run an average refrigerator. Uh, make sure you got like me, lots of batteries. There's a little open review of that big end power. Let me turn that over so we can see it. This big end power, it does have a surge capability of about 5,500. Uh, there are a few inverters here, and if you get into this solar and wind stuff, and you do that, you're gonna find real quick that you're gonna be buying a lot of this crap. And even that, even that little bitty thing right there, that little inverter right there, I keep them all, I use them all, every one of these work. If this one here makes sense to you, hopefully it'll give you some good details. I'll get you a good little walk around right here. Um, them big resistors right there, and big ceramic ones, huh? And um, it's, it's pretty healthy built machine. It's got really big, nice build. Look at that construction there, really impressive construction. See how they did the diodes with the bar? really nice and it's got damn good power and you look at here one two three four five so it's got ten of the large output mosfets output uh, transistors 24 of the others be ready to buy these things guys if you're going to do what i do